SoundCloud and broadcast. Boom, there we are. Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening. Way T. Lightheart here from the Digital Republic. I'm just going to hit the YouTube camera here. Uh, we are live, we are rolling. I'm back in the saddle again after a week of digital detox. Uh, so glad to hear you. I had a wonderful week. I hope you did too. I was out. By the way, if you notice that this is a little brighter than normal, that's because um, this is because <laughs> we've got really, really bright lights on today and the sun is shining in my eyes. So let me just turn that down a little bit. Still pretty good. Okay, great. Again, hi everybody, Way T. Lightheart from the Digital Republic. Uh, the No BS Rant this week, we're gonna talk about a couple of things, the three keys to survive and thrive in the new world, the digital media world. As I said recently, and this is one of the keys, before we get to the keys, I'm gonna tell you about some other keys. And that is, first thing I'd like to say is, uh, I had a great week off. Uh, apologies for those who were on my, uh, looking for this webinar last Monday night. By the way, I see you guys up there in YouTube. Hi, hi. Um, I, I'm not responding quickly because I got uh, Facebook over here, and I got YouTube over here, and I got Zoom on over here. So I don't know how, where you're reaching me, but bottom line is I'm seeing you, and I'm waving, and I'm saying I love you, and I hi. So the bottom line is um, three keys to survive and thrive in the digital world of digital media, online business. And, and we've got some great gold to share with you today. I want to thank everybody for joining us. Again, and apologies for last week. I had actually scheduled the week off, but my automatic sequence, which you can learn about in the online world is an important part, still mailed everybody and let everybody know that I was doing a webinar, but I actually wasn't doing a webinar and I had a couple friends text me and stuff like that saying, hey buddy, where are you? I was spending time with my parents uh, who I put on the plane this morning at, well, we got up at 4 a.m. and I drove them to the airport. We had a wonderful week. I took the week off. I had, I literally did, I didn't open my email. I didn't open my computer. I didn't uh, go on my phone. I, I answered, I think, four or five text messages. And I posted a couple pictures on Facebook uh, for my mother's sake because her friends wanted to see it. And that was it. And that's one of the keys, I think, with the digital world, it's in learning how to manage that, but we're gonna get into that in a minute. Um, one thing that struck me on this week that's really important, and I wanted to share this with you because I was literally going around, we were at a, a bunch of different things. We went to the Canada, uh, what is it called? A ride across Canada or whatever. It's, it's, it's an amazing ride here at the Pan Pacific. I had no idea. You need, you need people to come visit you in order to know, uh, you know what's the good things to do in your town. You don't do it if you're on your own. But anyways, I did that, fly across Canada. It was an amazing interactive thing, where three-dimensional thing. I went to there, we went to Whistler, uh, spent some time up there going to Peak to Peak Gondola. We went for lunch out in White Rock. I learned about gardening from my folks who are great gardeners. They helped set up my rooftop garden here at the Penthouse of the Digital Republic, which we're so happy to be in. And uh, so I'm now a gardener. My week off, I became a gardener. We grew our cuc We actually, I actually, got cucumbers. I got another cucumber to eat. Krista ate the other one. And uh, I, I got another one ready to come out for me. We got some tomatoes growing, some basil and parsley, and I got geraniums. Grandma, it's, it's amazing. And we had all these wonderful events. That was really exciting. But what, I'm ta what I noticed about as I traveled around is number one, there is an incredible amount of jobs available right now to people. Everybody in the end, everybody that's running businesses and, and going for what I would call uh, unskilled or semi-skilled labor. They're struggling. They're struggling to find people. When, well, why are people struggling to find people to go to work when so many people need money? Well, a lot of the jobs in the skilled and semi-skilled area, the problem with them is they, they aren't, they, there, aren't, there, isn't enough, there isn't enough money to support them in a town like, say, I live in, in Vancouver. So, it's easy to get the job. It's not easy to survive in that world. And that let me, and I, and I saw advertisements. I saw that Banff National Park couldn't get workers for it. That came out in, like, on the news flash on my, on my elevator ride down to my car. And, um, and I was talking to some friends of mine and they said they own restaurants. They can't get people to work for them. And there's this massive employment crutch. Now, keep in mind, governments want people to have employees because employees pay taxes 
and that makes governments run. And not that businesses don't pay taxes, but businesses employ workers that pay taxes. And that's why they give tax incentives to businesses because they need people to create work so that they can get taxes from the workers. And that's that relationship. And to own your own business and operate your own business is a lot of work. It's a lot of energy. It's a lot of risk. And there's an incredible amount of reward for that. And governments recognize that. And governments are also planning for that because they need to have productive workers for the next 30, 40, 50 years. And they're trusting business owners to go out and do all the things that the government can't do. Governments can't create jobs. Uh, government, they talk about it, but it's businesses that create jobs and businesses solve problems for a profit. And that is what the future is. And the reason that we enjoy such an amazing world here in the Western world um, is because of the free society and capitalistic ventures that allow people from any walk in life to offer services, to offer products, to offer solutions to problems that people are suffering, whether that's delivering you know, food to people, whether that's providing a business service, whether that's offering a personal service. The, the idea of that is a radical departure from what was happening before, say, the United States became a country. You were indebted to a monarchy, to a thing, you were stuck in your class, you, you were broke all the time, you had 15 kids, and you died often early of some infectious disease. That was the way life was. And if you want to check out, you could, there's, yes, there's problems with corporate capitalism and all that stuff. We all know that stuff. But in the long haul, I'll go with Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill said, you know, democracy is the worst form of government unless you compare it against all the rest. And in a democracy, the pursuit of happiness, the pursuit of uh, you know, a, a way to support yourself and your family is, is, is a, a fast important. And you might be saying, wait, what the heck does this have to do with the keys to survive and thrive in the new digital media world, in this world? And it has everything to do with it, okay? The reason it has everything to do with it is because in this little digital week of detox, and thankfully I was able to have that because of the the businesses that I'm able to run and I'm grateful for that. But, and, and I looked at the, these businesses not being able to find workers and workers not being able to support themselves. S skill, or what I say, unskilled and semi-skilled, okay? Laborers, whether that's working in a restaurant, dishwasher, book, you know, uh, digging dishes, all that sort of stuff, very typical. And I come from that background, that, that, that is the background. So I'm not saying that that's not a noble work or anything. I've done that. I've, I've been a landscaper. I've been a tree planter. I've been a doorman. I've been a bartender, right? Um, I, I, you know, a laborer. I, I've worked in retail sales. I've worked in gyms. I've been a personal trainer. Like, I've done a lot of different businesses. And what I've discovered is that the more skills that you build, the more that you can get paid or the more specialized or that a skill becomes, the more money that you can make, okay? So that leads to the first principle. Principle number uno, number one, the first principle. In the new world economy, you need to learn, and I'm gonna take what that means and develop a skill that is valuable to the level of your nature or what the marketplace is. So the more rare a skill is, gen and the more in demand the skill is, the more you can get paid to do that, okay? Does that make sense? So the, the rarer a skill is, okay, and the more in demand that skill is, the more you make. That is why there are a handful of people in Hollywood, there are millions of people trying to be actors, millions. Millions of people trying to be actors. There's only a handful, like Matthew McConaughey's in the world, that will make you believe he is the character that he is when you're watching Matthew McConaughey. And that's why Matthew McConaughey gets a lot of money. When you, I watched John Wick the other day, and uh, when you watch Keanu Reeves, Keanu Reeves is willing to do things that other actors aren't willing to do. He's willing to learn the sequence, the action sequence, to take the physical abuse, to go through that. 
The Rock is able to do things that, and it, well, just look at him. Like, who looks like The Rock? Like, a fraction of the people in the world. And of the people who look like that, who have the acting skills, the physical beauty, the, uh, the capability to learn the lines and do the actings and sell it and do that. And he's built that over the career of 20 plus years, 25 years. He talks about it recently in a post that how he got started out in acting and it wasn't working out good. Denzel Washington talked about that. He was trying to get on Broadway. He couldn't sing. He, he went 30 years before he got back to Broadway and got to do his first Broadway play in the same theater he got rejected from. But his skill set went up over those 30 years. He developed skills. So in today's world, in the digital world, if you want to survive and you want to thrive and you want to get out of the, I can't make enough money to support my lifestyle story that a lot of people are caught in. It's not just a story. It's a, it's a reality that is that the story comes from. And that is, you have got to develop some skills. And there's a guy by the name of Alvin Toffler who wrote a book and that you can write this down. The book is called Future Shock. He wrote this like, I don't know, like 40, 50 years ago. It's a long time ago he wrote this book. And he said that the future of the world, the, the people who will dominate the world are going to be, get this, the people who can learn, unlearn, and relearn. I didn't say that. I'm repeating that. Alvin Toffler, Future Shock, he said, the people who can learn, unlearn, and relearn. Okay, so that's the next equation. And I'm going to ask you something about this. Why do you think there is so much talk right now on, they're actually doing an experiment in Riverside, California on universal basic income. Basically, they're paying people $500 a month to do whatever they want. I think they're, char they're starting that in a couple other cities in Canada. They're paying people $500 a month to do whatever they want because they wanna see what's going to happen if you just pay people money for existing. Now, you, that's kind of a crazy idea, and it's an idea that was developed uh, kind of in, it, it's kind of a neo-Marxist idea. And if you follow the different opportunities, if you found the foundation, the founder of communism uh, was really two guys, Mark, uh, Marx and Engels, and they came up with this idea of, you know, the proletariat versus the bourgeoisie and unite the workers and all that sort of stuff. And there was some, there's some good principles inside there, but it just doesn't work in the real world. And if you want to get into all that stuff and really unpack it, I recommend checking out Jordan Peterson and all his work. That's not what the goal of this webinar is about. The goal of this webinar, I, let me kick my stand there first. The goal in this webinar is to kind of give you the tools of what you need to succeed and to kind of give you a top down vision of what it's going to take to set yourself up over the next five, 10, 20 years so that you can live the lifestyle you want, but also that you don't get caught in what I call, what I don't call this, actually, uh, um, Noah Yuval Harari, the writer of Homo Deus, uh, puts out as the rise of the useless class. So why is these uh, tech companies in Silicon Valley pushing this idea of universal basic income to pay people just enough money to live whether they work or not? And and, and, and you see it with uh, some of the political candidates in the United States, and you see it emerging in other areas. Um, why are they doing that? Well, I'll tell you why. And I was chatting uh, with my good buddy and friend and my business partner, Krill Hutchinson, about this particular topic today, because we both see it, and we're both concerned about it because people are going to miss the boat. People are saying, I need to learn social media marketing. I need to be involved in social media. No. You need to embrace technology. Technology is changing human biology. Technology is changing our social structure. Technology is changing the fabric of business. And robotics, uh, artificial intelligence, and algorithms are replacing the skill the, 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 the unskilled and low-skilled or semi-skilled workers. 
And it's going to keep moving up the ladder as blockchain emerges and starts developing. So things that were contractual basis that were usually handled in the realm of lawyers and legal processes, those are going to be replaced. When you look at real estate services are moving into online and digital stuff that you'll be able to put a program up and show your house and bargain the house and negotiate the house and contract the house and have a transaction that happens on cryptocurrency and all that sort of, that's where the future's going folks. It sounds nuts. It sounds crazy. But half of you are probably watching this on a phone when that idea was crazy 15 years ago. The idea that I can broadcast to you on a channel that goes around the world and there's people in virtually every continent of the world watching this sounded crazy 20 years ago and everybody that has a smartphone is doing it, okay? They didn't, they didn't have the internet in most of the world, okay? There's like 500,000 people coming onto the internet every day or something like that. It's nuts, okay? So what does that mean? It means that you and your family and your kids and everybody that you love, you better have a strategy to learn and to shift and develop skills in the new world economy. I wrote a book about this, The Wealthy Backpacker. For those of you I'm saying, I'm actually re-editing the, the newest edition for the Digital Republic. But I talk about that because if you do not develop these skills, you will be the useless class. And that's not because you're not smart. It's not because you're not motivated. It's not because you don't want to do things. It's just because the technological train is going to leave you behind. It's over. It's, it, the, the train has left the station. We are chasing after the train and clambering aboard and we're learning the skills of this economy. That's why we developed the Digital Republic. The Digital Republic provides technological tools and, 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 and a process to help you get started in learning this and we partner with specific products and services. But at the end of the day, that is going to continue to grow, continue to develop, continue to adapt as the world adapts, as the world changes, as the world grows. And if you're not doing this, you are part of a world that doesn't exist anymore. That's scary. It's really scary. My, my folks showed up here. I love my parents. Uh, they are phenomenal people. They are the salt of the earth. Um, my dad worked as a laborer his whole life. He's a smart guy. He didn't like being inside. He was trained in business management and worked for uh, as an accounting in a, in a company, I think it was called Vilas Industries back in the day. He didn't like it. He wanted to be outside. He wanted to work with his hands. He wanted to be in fresh air. And he made a great career out of that, um, was very well respected in his field, provided for his family. Uh, we had, not only did we have food on our table, we had a place to live and we had a great thing. He taught me a lot of great values about that. My mom was a homemaker, uh, you know, uh, as, as quote unquote, a housewife. She loved doing it. She felt good about doing it. She raised us up and I feel so grateful that I had that experience. Now, guess what? My, my parents, they don't have a smartphone. My dad has a flip phone. He doesn't even turn it on. Okay, they have the, 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 he doesn't even, he only has it to call out in an emergency. He doesn't use the phone. In fact, when he got on the plane, I told him, you need to turn the phone on, Dad, when you land. So in case there's changes, they can let you know that your next flight and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, I'm walking them through some of the digital stuff. Um, they watch some things on Facebook. So if you see this sometime, Dad, Mom, <laughs> hi. Um, the bottom line is, is they're not digitally savvy. They're not going to be digitally savvy. They don't want to be digitally savvy and that's okay. They're on a pension at the end, you know, and, and they're in their retirement years, but for the, and, and they live in, they live in New Brunswick, which is, you know, it's, it's a much lower economic set. They, they, they literally couldn't survive in the city that I live in. There's no way that on the income that they could live and what they did, there's no way they could survive. So there's, so I know there's a lot of people, my mom and dad's age that can't survive. I also know there's even more people 10 years younger. There's more people 20 years younger. There's more people 30 years younger and more people 40 years younger that cannot survive. They're living 10 people in a house. They're working a job as a waiter or waitress or a, a landscaper or a painter or whatever. And they're barely scraping by and they're coming home and they're watching TV or they're watching you. They're taking advantage of digital media. They're enjoying digital media. They're learning, but they are not developing skills. It's one thing to learn, it's another thing to learn skills. And the skills in the digital age is to be able to, 
to market and promote your products and services to the digital to, 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 to a digital frame because it does not have the limitations of scale. And guess what? Everybody is getting involved in this. The people who recognize this, and you're probably one of them, that recognize that you need to start doing this now. You need to get involved in this now. Why? Because five years from now, 10 years from now, so many people are gonna be involved, the value of that is going to go down because the top people are gonna be dominating. They're gonna be living those lifestyles that you've seen. They're gonna be making fabulous amounts of money and having uh, systems of people working for them. So you'll learn enough skills that you can work for that person, but you will not have the lifestyle that you want. That's the facts. And as painful as that might sound, I'm here to tell you that it's that important. And the only reason I know this is because I got involved in this world 15 years ago, no background, no skills. I didn't own a computer. I learned from somebody that was able to provide me a, a vehicle, a voice, a platform, if you will, to get a message out there because I did have some skills in one particular area. I, I had skills as a, as a fitness coach and as a trainer and as a bodybuilder and I had credentials. And because I had that ability, he was able to provide me a platform that I could go out and teach the world that and we could make money together. He needed me, I needed him, we built a company, it's still going today. Whew, that was a lot. I'm, I am fired up today. No caffeine either. Haven't had caffeine in uh, almost two weeks. But I'm passionate about this, folks. I am so passionate about this. Um, and before we get into principle number two, um, because we're going to get into some nuts and bolts here. Um, I'm so passionate about why people need to learn this industry and this technology is because, man, oh, man, if you're not doing this, you are going to get left. Your, your future is looking bleak. That's why in that book, Homo Deus, he says 47% of the jobs that are available today are going to be eliminated by 2033 by robotics, artificial intelligence, and mathematical algorithms. Don't believe me. Go buy the book and read it, and you will know why this is so important. Now, let's go to part number two. What is So principle number one is learn and develop skills usable, valuable skills. And the best skill that you can learn is how to market online because that, that will allow you to roll with whatever's coming down the pipeline and to get in a loop with the latest and greatest marketing trends because they will change at a rapid rate over the next five to 10 years. It's just the way the market is, okay? Next, number two. You gotta test often, you gotta test frequently, And what does that mean? What does testing really mean? Testing means failing. Failing a lot. Okay? I tried this. It didn't work. I tried that. I didn't work. You've already been through this process. It's called walking. Okay? So when you are a baby, think about it. You have no muscle tone. You have no coordination skills. You're just a little bob blob of eating and pooping and crying and Googling so that you get more love and more food and so someone will change your diapers and feed you. Now that program works for a period of time and you learn how to eat and feed yourself and clothe yourself, you get some education and after 20 years they turn you out into the world and say, go to it kid. And what has happened to most people? They fail and they think that they're a failure. That's not the case. When you are a baby, you learn the most complex motor skill there is on the planet, and that is how to walk. Walking is what separates us from virtually all of the other animals on the planet. Walking upright, two legs, locomotion allowed us to expand our territories, to grow and to surround, to get around the world. That's one of the areas. And if you want to go back into how important that was, you can go back to uh, sapiens and see the rise of hominids and the different types and all that sort of stuff. That's another book by Harari, by the way. It's really fascinating to get into it and you can understand why that's so important and so clear and why that gave us an advantage because we could run after four-legged animals who were very explosive and would tire out. We developed sweat glands that allowed us to cool off and allow us to run, run distances. So, the, so the, you know, the zebra takes off at an explosive rate. We can't catch the zebra in like, we can't catch the zebra in like a short sprint, but over the long marathon, we can run that, we can run that sucker down, spear them, feed the family, okay? That's what makes a, a 
humans, another reason why humans are powerful be, and we develop like all these different technologies to cool ourselves off that animals don't possess. We don't have to pant, we get to sweat. But in order to get there, and, and why I'm talking about this, walking is a very, very complex one thing. Now, how many times does a baby try to walk? It spends you like a year trying to get up and stand and you fall down and you get back up and you keep going and mom holds you, dad holds you and you waddle along and your aunt, grandma holds you. And you know, you take your first steps and everybody cheers, yay! And then the kid falls down and you know, you go through this process and everybody knows it and it's normal and it's acceptable. But somehow we get to high school or we get to school and we get graded on the system and we develop this concept of pass and fail. And I talked about this in another lecture. You can check out my YouTube channel and go back to that. And we got in programmed with this idea of, of, of success and failure. They're illusions. They're illusions. They're totally crazy. They're totally artificially generated. I blame it on the school system. It's a school to shut you down. It's a system to shut you down from, from actually experiencing and learning and testing and failing. My business partner in this company here, Bioptimizers, and we'll talk about, more about that one day, um, it's a nutrition company that was the company we started 15 years ago. It started out as another name. It evolved, it evolved, it evolved. And now we are still running today, 15 years later. Can you believe that? It's amazing. And what my business partner, his number one skill is split is, is a, is a, is a technology called split testing. And split testing is basically you run an ad, a, ad a with this headline, you run ad B with another headline, you add other ad C with a different picture than the other two. And you keep testing different things. It's called split testing. So you'll send people to one page, that page, that page, and you see which one works. And then you change this and you change this and you change this and you see which one should. And you keep testing and keep testing and keep testing until you get the ad, the copy, the, the project that, that has more success. And he said that his number one skill in this industry, and he's one of the best split testers in the world. I hope to get him on the Digital Republic one day um, for an interview. I think he'll, he'll, he'll blow your mind. The number one skill that he has is his ability to test and not get deterred by failure. To write an ad and it bomb. To put a picture on it and to bomb. To test some sales copy and it bombs. To do an ad campaign and it bombs. To try business, it bombs. To try a new product and bombs. I don't know anybody that has failed more than he has. In fact, he's got a system that allows him to see his failings in a way so he can lead to success. And if you are going to develop the, 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 I think one of the number one skills in the digital media world, how to survive and thrive, is to learn how to split test, how to fail and fail and fail and fail. And in that process, you learn because it relates to number one. You test, you fail, you test, you fail, you test, you fail, but each time you're learning. And as you learn, you are now identifying and developing a skill and that skill allows you to be good at what you do so that two or three or four years from now, you know the copy that's gonna work. You know the pictures that are gonna work. You know the landing page that's gonna work. You know the things that are gonna work and you know a hundred, maybe thousands of things that don't work. And like, our, uh, you know, you look at uh, Edison who invented the light bulb. He did over 10,000 experiments. Uh, before he found the element, tungsten, I believe it was, to make the light bulb work. And someone asked him, well, how did you, how did you handle failing 10,000 times? He said, no, I didn't fail 10,000 times. I found 10,000, I did 10,000 different experiments on things that didn't produce the light bulb until I found the one that did. Wow, think about that. Edison influenced society as much as maybe any American has. He's certainly in the top 10. Um, his company, General Electric, was the last company, be uh, original company on the stock exchange to get delisted. I think it got delisted recently. Um, but that company has been around from the beginning of the stock exchange. And he did, he built a huge factory. And there was a scene, uh, I think there was a, an interesting scenario where his factory was actually burning down and it had all these weird gases in it. And he, 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 he came home and he, and he told his family, hey, come on out, come out and watch the, the factory burn because the chemicals are producing these amazing colors and gases. Now think about this. His life works is burning. The factory is on fire. It's devastating. Most people would be horrified. It's the worst day ever. He's telling his, he's telling his family members, so hey, let's go watch the show 
as it burns because that's important. That's exciting. We want to get, enjoy the show. And literally after they got the fire out and it's burnt, he just rebuilt the shop and said, you know, it's great because now there's going to be a whole bunch of things they can put into this that I couldn't do before. Now you think, well, that's a great story. It was Edison. He had lots of money. No, what Edison had is he had uh, an, an ability to understand what failure is. Failure is an essential part of, the, of running tests and experimentation so that you can learn and you can develop the skill, in his case, of being an inventor. Okay? Now, did he, it, it, does it make sense to follow various scientific principles or marketing principles or learning from other people? Of course it does. Does it, mean, does it make sense to develop a process to go through that? Yes, it does. There are always more efficient ways to go through learning than inefficient ways. Of course, and that's why you want to spend part of your time learning how to learn and part of your time learning what you need to learn. Okay, part of your time learning on how to learn, part of your, the other part of your time on learning what to learn. Very, very important and how you do this and then you can test and fail over and over and over again in a way that develop, leads you to develop the skill that you need to survive. Now, that's the next part of the thing. So learning how to fail and not consider it as failure, learning to recognize it. Hi, by the way, all you people on, uh, I see you on Facebook Live. I want to say hi, shout out. I'm not answering particularly because I'm talking on YouTube and talking on Facebook and Zoom and all these things. Um, I don't have enough hands to do all that stuff. But those are the essential components, right? Are you willing to go through the pain? Because the pain of failure is really a conditioned response that we learn from the education system. The baby never felt those pains. The baby might have felt frustrated. The baby might have felt certain, so that sucks or that doesn't work. But he wasn't saying I'm a failure. He wasn't saying I'm a loser. He wasn't saying I didn't, I didn't make it. It's, it was just saying, okay, I learned a different way. I learned, oh, if I lean this way, I fall over. I learned if I lean this way, I fall on my face. I fall this way, I fall on my back. Okay? Those are painful experiences, but the baby is innately wants to walk, so it, it keeps moving that because it sees the other people walk and says, I want to walk. And it comes to the new world, if you want the lifestyle that you want, if you want the life that you want, if you want to call the shots, if you don't want to get left behind in this, this rise of technology, then you've got to do the work, do the skills, and jump into it and go for it. And that means a lot of failure. And that's an essential component to success. So that's principle number two, how to survive and thrive in the new world economy, in the digital media marketplace, in the world of uh, expansion of technology. Now, next part, three. Evolution or evolve and adapt. I got two of them. We actually have these as principles in, in uh, my company by Optimizers. Um, we actually teach these principles as part of our company culture. And why is that? Well, we started out selling bodybuilding programs to natural bodybuilders online. And now we ended up, and, and, and now we ended up with a nutritional supplement company that fixes digestion. How did that happen? Hi guys, I see you out there, Dana, Roger, great to hear from you, beautiful, love seeing you all guys, awesome, Quentin, great to have you on here, brother. Think about this, evolve and adapt. Why is that so important? Well, I don't know if you know this, but Charles Darwin, right? The survival of the fittest, the, he, he came up, that, that's how he's misquoted, misquoted. They said Charles Darwin had the evolutionary theory of uh, the theory of evolution and, and through natural selection of process of people, basically organisms feeling, learning how to fail and adapt. In other words, if this organism had good eyes and this organism had bad eyes, the one with good eyes survived maybe as an eagle and the one with bad eyes as an eagle starved. And over that, the ones with the good eyes were replicated. That's the basic tenets. But it was called survival of the fittest. And this become the foundation of kind of the 80s corporate Gordon Gecko greed is good thing that we're going to fight and we got to take from everybody and we got to win and it doesn't matter and all that kind of garbage that people are kind of grossed out about, right? And, and that was cool. And I, I get it. And there's a competitive nature and there's a competitive side of that. It's fun. But here's the crazy part about this. If you actually read the book, 
And I have. I've read Charles Darwin. I, I'm, in, I'm into some weird stuff, folks. I, I'll confess. I read these things because I want to know what people learn. And he didn't say that. He didn't say survival of the fittest. I'll tell you what he said. He said survival of the most adaptable. Survival of the most adaptable. Now, if it was survival of the fittest, if you went down to Gold's Gym, Venice Beach, California, you, I can tell you, you go into that gym, you are going to see the fittest, the strongest, the most endurance people, the, the best endurance, the, the, the qualifications of fitness are defined at Gold's Gym, Venice Beach, California. I'm a card-carrying member of that beautiful facility. Okay? Awesome place. Now, if I look at Elon Musk and I look at Bill Gates and I look at Warren Buffett, Three of the wealthiest men in the world. For the wealth, wealth, wealthiest people in the world. If I look at Oprah Winfrey, so let's add some women in there, right? If I add Oprah Winfrey into that equation. So let's take Oprah Winfrey, let's take Warren Buffett, let's take Bill Gates, let's take Elon Musk, okay? Their combined net worth is some frightening amount. I, it's, it's like literally probably like, a section of the whole world's gross domestic product, those guys, the, the value that these people have created in the world. Would you say that any one of those people could live, lift more weight than the best people in Venice Beach, California? The Gold's Gym. Of course not. Do you think they could run farther or faster than all of those people? No. Do you think they have lower body fat levels? No. Do you think on any level that those people, those people who have created, like Oprah Winfrey, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, and Warren Buffett, do you think that those people are fitter than the people at Gold's Gym or even at your local gym? Of course they're not. But, but, and this is what speaks to Charles Darwin. Those guys, what did they do? They developed specific skills in their areas, okay? Skills, specific skills in those areas that allowed them to learn and provide value. They tested theories. They tested models. They tested systems. Tesla, I don't know how many things he's blown up, right? He's blown up rockets. He's blown up cars. He's had fires at the plant. He's still going, right? And the guy's flying rocket ships to, to things. He, he learned, he tested, he failed to death. Uh, Warren Buffett started investing when he was like five or six years old, okay? Bill Gates was on a computer program when he was a teenager and staying up all night to get online to do these things, okay? There's, there's, there, there's uh, Oprah Winfrey got skills and she was working on a radio show and people wouldn't listen to her and all this sort of stuff. And she kept developing skills. Her and Maria Shriver were working together in a station together and she kept developing skills and developing skills until she became one of the most influential women people in the history of the planet. Because if she can do it, anybody can do it. Her story is amazing. Okay. If you, you look at these people and what they're doing, they adapted to where the world is. They developed skills that were valuable in the marketplace of where they lived. They evolved and adapted into people who could provide massive value in the world. And that's why if you want to develop the life that you want, if you want to own the things you want to own, you want to do the things you want to do, you want to share with the people that you want to share with. You want to do that at your fullest expression as you as a human. If you want to develop your full capabilities, your full potential, your full activated super self. If you're going to do this, how are you going to do this? You are going to have to go through these three steps. You're going to have to learn, 
some specific, learn how to learn and learn the skills that you need to do that are gonna be valuable in the marketplace. That is the digital world today. You're gonna to have to run a bunch of tests and in those tests, you are gonna fail often and you're gonna fail frequently until you learn because that's gonna give you skills and then you're gonna to have to evolve and adapt as the digital world changes at a very rapid place that it is going to do. That's what's gonna happen. This is not about survival of the fittest. It is about survival of the most adaptable. 47% of the jobs are going to be gone by 2033, replaced by robotics, artificial intelligence, and mathematical algorithms, folks. That's the way it's going to be. And if you're not on the train now, it's going to be gonzo out of the planet. It's going to leave, it's, it's left the station, and you just want to get some of the last tickets aboard this because if you don't, you're in trouble. Your family's in trouble and you are going to be part of this useless class that they're gonna give you enough money to stay hooked up on some junk food, staring into a TV, and not developing your full potential. And that sounds cool for a while, but you know what? It sucks as a lifestyle over time, and you will never be the perfect, unique ability and develop your unique ability, your skills, your passions, your, your growth, and you will not contribute to your family, your community, or the world at the level that you could. So how do you start? Well, first things first, I don't care where you're at. I don't care how much you're suffering. Go out and, and, and buy uh, 12 Rules for Life by uh, Jordan Peterson. Buy that book. There's 12 basic skills of how to uh, get yourself going, okay? That's Jordan Peterson's, uh, you know, 12 Rules for Life. The second book that you want to get is you want to get the book that's uh, – it's called uh, Mastering One Self. I, I lost the name of it. It's the, the father of the MBA. Oh my God, I can't believe I lost it. I've read this book. And it's basically how you learn. Are you an auditory learner? Do you need to write what you learn? Are you a visual learner? Um, how do you get information? You need, you need to learn how you learn, okay? You can go out and buy Future Shock, okay? Buy Future Shock by Alvin Toffler about how you, you need to learn and unlearn and relearn, right? Thank you on that one, Jamie. That's a good one. Um, and then from those three books, you're going to have a background of what you need to do. I would suggest maybe getting something from Tony Robbins, like Awaken the Giant Within, to kind of get and, and do a deep dive into your own psyche of what you really want. You've got to get specific. You've got to get laser focused, and you need to know what you want. And, and, and how you're going to get there will show up, but you need to know it and it needs to be touched to a why and, and how you're going. And then finally, after you do all of those things, I would encourage you to check out and jump on the Digital Republic and, or, or some other platform, something where you're going to start learning how to make money in the digital economy, in the new world, developing skills, getting involved in a community. You need to get involved in a community that's going to help support you because the community you're in now is probably not helping you become your full self. It's probably not helping you build your online business. It's probably not helping you to, to get, develop things. You know, uh, I was listening to someone the other day, I forget who it was, the, I think it might've been Jim Rohn, and he said, go hang around, uh, go look at the five people that you are. Yeah, it was Jim Rohn. The five people that you hang around the most and see what, what they do and how they do it and what they think and how they think and guess what? You are going to be the summation of the income of all those people. You're going to be the middle of the road of the lifestyle of those people. You're going to be dead smack in the middle of those five people that you hang around with. And the reality is, and this is going to sound really harsh, it's going to sound really painful, but if you're spending all your time uh, thinking what they think, doing what they do, and spending your time doing those things, you're going to end up like them. And that's hard facts. But the reality is, is you're going to have to get outside of that and you're going to have to find a community that's going to support you as you go through the three steps, three steps, that's learn a new skill, test and fail frequently, and evolve, adapt, and allow yourself to grow into this new world, digital economy, digital media, the way the world's working. I've got, I could go on about this forever and ever and ever, uh, but the bottom line is, is you've got to get on this program and believe me, if you do, it, it'll be rewarding. I'm not going to say it's, it's rainbows and unicorns. This is not get rich quick program. Uh, this is not, hey, this is what, you know, this is going to be uh, easy. The reality is it's going to be tough. It's going to be challenging. You are going to get tested. 
you are going to fail, you are going to have a, uh, 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 some painful adaptations, and you're doing this now so that you can live the life that you want to live because you know what? It wasn't easy for an ancestors going across the savannah. It wasn't easy for ancestors coming over in boats and you know people starving, and it wasn't easy for people running at bullets and guns and, and women dying from lack of sanitation and all these things that happened for thousands and thousands of years. We solved a lot of those problems, but these problems of adapting to the new world, the digital world, the, the, the world that, that people are finding ourselves that we're connecting with in this line, you gotta develop these skills, you gotta buckle down, you gotta get rid of some of the other stuff, and you gotta do it. One, two, three, learn, test, evolve, and adapt. That's the way, learn the great skills, test, and that means failing often, and evolve and adapt to the new world, the new economy, the new digital media place. If you do those things, you will have a chance to live the life of your dreams. And if you don't, you will be on some sort of techno government lifestyle support where they're just infusing a sugar hose into your mouth, numbing you out, feeding you a bunch of drugs, so you're staring at a TV with drool dripping down your face and you will never discover how amazing you really are. I'm Way T. Lightheart. It's the no BS rant from the Digital Republic. I love you, I care about you, I hope you enjoy it. If you like this, please put a, a check mark on my Facebook. Please put a shout out on my YouTube page. We need to get this message out. We need to share about how important this is. And we need you, more importantly, to go out there, develop those skills, become the person that you wanna be, double down, buckle down, get the distractions out of your life. Do this because you deserve it. I love you, take care, over and out.